Good morning. Well, it's Sunday the 25th of April 2021 and there's a little bit of a chill in the air at the moment, but it is supposed to be another fine sunny day, so I'm sure it will warm up as the day goes on. Well, today's walk starts in another beautiful Peak District village, but what I particularly like about this village is it's more off the beaten track than some of the others. I'll explain more as the day goes on. The small village of Sheldon, perched high above the River Wye, is an absolute gem. Surrounded by stunning White Peak limestone countryside, it is a cluster of characterful stone cottages on a hill, mostly built along one single lane. The village is an ancient one, recorded in the Doomsday Book, and became an important centre for lead mining in the 18th and 19th centuries, at which time its population boomed. Today, it is much more peaceful and idyllic than its industrial past suggests. Sheldon has a wonderful country pub, the Cock and Pullet, which serves good food and has a wonderfully cosy atmosphere. Although it looks old and fits perfectly into its surroundings, the Cock and Pullet was built in 1995, replacing the original village pub, the Devonshire Arms, which is now a private house. Just a little further up the hill is Sheldon Village Hall, which is actually called the Hartington Memorial Hall. What I like about Sheldon is that it's a village which, as I said before, is very much off the beaten track, but it's not on a main road, so you don't pass through it to go anywhere. If you come to Sheldon, you have to make a point of coming to Sheldon. So I think that's a lot of its appeal there. It's very much off the beaten track and more isolated than a lot of other Peak District villages. My walk began by taking a track signposted to the church. St Michael and All Angels Church is a Grade 2 listed parish church. It is very pretty, built in 1864 using stone from the demolished Chapel of Ease. Continuing along the track, I made my way in a northwesterly direction as I followed the route towards White Lodge and Deep Dale. So a fairly leisurely walk today then. So this walk's just over four miles and if I call, recall correctly, I don't think there were any major steep climbs in this. You know, a few gradual ascents maybe, but hopefully uh, 
My mind's not playing tricks on me there. Memory cheats, as they say. So it's a long time since I've done this walk. Many years, actually. This is a walk I did a few times. A uh, long time ago. To say, it's, it's a great walk for a Sunday stroll, really. Just a Sunday afternoon stroll. And I remember doing it with a friend once in the evening. We parked at Sheldon and then did this very walk and ended up back at the cock and pull it for a quick pint before going home. It was great. To say, again, Sheldon's not very far from Matlock, just up the road from it. So it was always a nice place to come and visit. So, uh, yeah, just sort of makes me think, you know, why, why is it taking me such a long time to come back to Sheldon? Oh well, it's nice to be back here today anyway. Reaching some hummocks of old mining activity, I turned sharp right along the edge of a field to head north. Okay, well the path is starting to drop quite steeply now, so before I actually go down that steep stretch there, I just want to give a quick shout out to a couple of other people I know, Stephen and Lisa. Hello Stephen and Lisa! <laughs> now Stephen and Lisa live fairly local to me. I know that they drink in a couple of my local pubs. They love walking, they've done many of the walks that I've done and they've done many of their own too, so I know that they really enjoy their own walks. So I just wanted to say to you both, Stephen and Lisa, I'm going to look forward to enjoying a pint with you very, very soon. That was exhilarating. If I'd have gone any faster, it was a serious danger of me just going whoosh off the end here. <laughs> so you do have to come down there very carefully. <sighs> oh well, what fun that was. Right, well, I think I've been here before. This looks familiar. My last walk, in fact, my very last walk, because this is Great Shackler Wood again. I went this way and I came up from there. So I'm going to just go back that way for a short distance. Yeah, that's it on the last walk. I came up there from White Lodge. But now I'm going to turn off here this time and I'm going to walk up Deep Dale. I was now heading southwest as my path joined a stream, following it effortlessly into the very picturesque Deep Dale. One of several Deep Dales, this nature reserve is one of those special places where, if you visit the right part at the right time of year, you will see masses of colour spreading over the hillsides from all the various wonderful plants that grow here. in memory of Jeremy David Wright, a plant lover all his life.
Yeah, it's nice. I kept going along the shallowing dale. Before long, I reached a gate, through which I would continue up the dale on the other side of the dry stone wall. Okay, well I could go that way, where that couple's going. That'll take me straight back into Sheldon. But I still want to go on and follow Deepdale to the very end, really, right to the top. So, more to see this way. Closer to the end of Deep Dale now, although this is not so deep dale. It's getting shallower the higher up I go. Deeper bits back there where I came from. Still beautiful though. Gorgeous walk again. Well, I had my first haircut a few days ago. My first haircut from the barbers. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> first haircut in months. I mean, during these lockdowns we've had, of course a lot of us have had to cut our own hair and you know, like everybody else, I bought myself a set of clippers and to be honest with you, I, I was getting quite good at it, I had quite a bit of practice so I didn't do too bad a job. The worst bit was actually when you're trying to look in the mirror to cut your hair <laughs> and doing the back as well, that's the worst bit, trying to look in the mirror and you're sort of like going Yeah, not quite sure. So that's quite difficult. So I learned, as I had more practice, not to look in the mirror. You just have to feel your way across. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't do too bad a job. But I have to say that it was such a luxury going to the barbers a few days ago. So Seb, you are a star. Nice to see Seb again. Seb's a good friend of mine, and he's cut my hair for many years. And uh, yeah, I look forward to having Decent haircuts by the barber. I mean, I could carry on cutting my own hair, but as I say, I didn't do too bad a job really, but I have to say, I much prefer to spend the money and get Seb to do it for me, because he does a much better job. Ah, these little things that you miss, eh? <laughs> the long, gradual ascent from Deepdale eventually ended as the track on which I was now walking came out onto a lane. Ah, okay, I've just got to follow the road for a bit. Now, I've been wanting to use this word for quite some time now. I'm going to do some road bashing. Hey, Mark. <laughs> My friend Mark, who's got the Y Explorer channel on YouTube. If you've not checked it out, do so. He's got a brilliant channel. Now, I know in one of Mark's walks, he actually, when he was doing some on-road walking, he actually called it road bashing. So I thought that was brilliant. What a superb word, Mark. So I'm gonna use it more when I'm doing some road walking. Okay, a short bit of road bashing then. I followed the lane as it ran dead straight for about half a mile. And just beyond a junction where a lane led to Sheldon, I reached a path off to the left in the bottom of the dip. Okay, that was my little bit of road bashing. I really enjoyed it. I'm now going to walk to Magpie Mine. Magpie Mine has a fascinating history, spanning more than 200 years of bonanzas and failures of bitter disputes and fights, 
resulting in the murder of three miners and a widow's curse that is said to remain to this day. The square chimney was originally built in 1840 to serve a winding engine, of which all trace has now disappeared. When the horizontal winding engine was installed later in 1869, a flue was built to connect the existing chimney to it. The agent's house and adjacent smithy were built in the 1840s. They have been renovated and are now used as the field centre of the Peak District Mines Historical Society. The most impressive features are the ruined Cornish engine house which dates from 1869 and the adjacent circular chimney built in 1840 to serve an earlier engine but then reused. Just in front of the engine house is the 728 foot deep main shaft marked by the steel headgear and cage dating from the mine's last phase of operation in the 1950s. North of the Cornish engine house is the circular powder house built in 1840, whilst to the east a replica horse gin has been erected on the red soil engine shaft. Another gin circle can also be seen at the western extremity of the site, serving the original Shuttlebark engine shaft built in 1760. Interesting place, Magpie Mine. I've passed it many times because when I'm driving around the Peak District, whether it's for work or in my own time, you can see it from the road, but I've only actually walked to it very few times, so it's nice to have another look over it today. So that's Magpie Mine. Nice short walk back to Sheldon now then. Overall then, the atmospheric remains of Magpie Mine are one of the best places to visit in the Peak District and one of the top industrial heritage sites in Derbyshire. It was the last working lead mine in the Derbyshire ore field and is probably the best surviving example anywhere in the UK of a 19th century lead mine. It had been a real pleasure visiting it today. From Magpie Mine, I followed paths across the fields and through several gates as I headed back towards Sheldon. Blimey, that was the that's the narrowest gap style I've gone through. I suppose I could have gone open open the gate, couldn't I? <laughs> oh. We're at the end of another lovely walk here in the Peak District. Yeah, fairly leisurely one, just over four miles as I say. 
I think the hardest part was probably the bit where I had to drop down steeply for that short distance at the edge of Great Shackler Wood. But apart from that, it's been a very leisurely walk, so a real pleasure to do today and to start and end here in this lovely sleepy village of Sheldon.